According to a UN assessment, drylands, which include substantial desert expanses, make up 41.3% of Earth's total surface area. What if a significant portion of this area could be turned into fertile soil suitable for growing crops? In China, which has a total land area of 3.5 million square miles, only 12% of which is arable, this matter is extremely significant. Chongqing Jiaodong University researchers in China claim to have created a unique technology in 2016 that may turn desert into agricultural land. Northwest China's southwestern Xinjiang region contains the Taklamakan Desert. It is bordered to the south by the Kunlun Mountains, to the west by the Pamir Mountains, to the north by the Tian Shan Range, and to the east by the Gobi Desert. While most scholars concur that the Persian word Makan means location, the origin of Takla is less certain. The word could be a Uyghur borrowing of Tark, which means to leave alone slash out slash behind, renounce, forsake in Persian, plus Makan. It is possible that it derives from the Turkey word for the place of ruins, Taklamakan. In order to make Taklamakan and Tokaristan seem comparable, Chinese historians Wang Guowei and Huang Wendi connected the term to the historical Darim Basin population known as the Tokarians. According to Uyghur scholar Turdi Medesan Kara, the term Turkimekan is whence the name Taklamakan originates. The name Turkai Makan first appears in the book Tevri I Mustian, which was written in the Hotan prefecture of Xinjiang in 1867. It is claimed to mean place of no return or go in and you'll never get out in folk etymology. With a surface size of 337,000 square kilometers, 130,000 square miles, the Taklamakan Desert is only marginally larger than Germany. The Darim Basin, which is 400 kilometers, 250 miles, wide and 1,000 kilometers, 620 miles, long, includes the desert. Two branches of the Silk Road, used by travelers to bypass the dry wasteland, traverse it at its northern and southern edges. It is the second biggest shifting sand desert in the world and ranks 17th in terms of size among the major deserts, with over 85% of its surface area made up of shifting sand dunes. Dunes can be as tall as 300 feet or 60 feet, 18 meters, 91 m. These tiny clumps of alluvial clay are the only breaks in this sea of sand. The steeper sides of the dunes typically face away from the dominant winds. Two motorways spanning the desert have been built by the People's Republic of China. The cities of Hotan, on the southern boundary, and Luntai, on the northern edge, are connected by the Darim Desert Highway, while the road from Bangal to Ruachian cuts through the desert to the east. Due to desertification, the desert has grown in some areas recently, with its sands engulfing farmland and settlements. China's attempt to successfully construct a new city in the largest desert took 10 years. American experts are well aware that the desert is a lifeless, inhospitable place where no one can live because the entire area is covered with sand. People and plants cannot survive in the desert due to the lack of rain. Humans are more aware of deserts than ever before, and greening has become a global issue. So why is China going backwards and relocating people to the desert to live there? And what type of life do they lead there? One of the nations with the largest desert areas is China. Desertification risks are widespread and serious. The Tacoma Khan Desert is the most well-known in China. This miracle city was built in the desert centerland, and it is also the only desert city in China. 20,000 people live here, coming from various Chinese cities because this desert has abundant oil resources and they had to relocate there in order to live. Surviving in the desert will undoubtedly present many challenges, but it is really admirable that they did so. They have lived in the desert city for seven years and have also turned into a desert people due to the difficult environment they must work in, where sandstorms occur one-third of the year. How much oil is there after greening the first batch of sand control personnel? Since the 1950s, China has spent decades persevering in order to find oil. In 1984, a large amount of oil was discovered and numerous oil fields were discovered. 
the oil field reserves are as high as 7.5 billion tons, and if China does not import oil, this oil will be enough for China to use for 10 years. Therefore, they must extract the oil. The people of the city decided to enter the Sea of Death and construct numerous roads to the outside world starting in 1990. It took China five years to construct the first road, which runs through the desert for more than 500 kilometers from north to south. Since then, the length of the road has been continuously extended and branch roads have been built to ensure the development of oil and gas. This desert now has five roads linking to the outside world. It is no longer a restricted place for life and people can come in and go out with roads. Fields have also emerged in the next 10 years. China will build four further roads in this desert. Sand control has emerged as the second issue that needs to be resolved because there are 20,000 people living here. If the sand and dust problem cannot be managed, the city, which took 10 years to build, will soon be buried by quicksand. The people living here will also experience a health crisis due to the sandstorm, and they will eventually die in 2000. In order to give the residents of this city a healthy living environment and to prevent the roads on both sides of the city from collapsing in order to prevent and regulate sand on a wide scale, China started organizing personnel. In order to protect the road, the oil workers here have adopted sand fixing and greening measures that include weaving hay into squares, planting them in the desert so that they extend more than 100 meters on either side of the road, and using geotextiles to create a partition in the middle of the grass squares. They also plant trees on the squares. The entire green belt uses strip irrigation, and every two kilometers, an irrigation booster station is installed. For many years, forest rangers have been in charge of this station. A thriving Euphratica that was planted in the desert people who live here no longer look up at the yellow sand in the sky, which has grown into a towering tree 20 years later, and they start to see green. Vitality here, after several years of research, scientists chose four plant species from among more than 70 species of plants that can withstand high temperatures, wind, and sand. These surviving plants have prevented quicksand from repeatedly harassing the road since 2003 by slowing the flow of the desert on both sides of the road. In the Tacoma Khan Desert, green plants with a width of more than 70 meters have been planted on both sides of the five roadways as part of an ecological project that covers a total area of more than 3,500 hectares. Excellent ideas, such jujube and haloxylon, exist for sand fixation and windbreak. In the Tacoma Khan Desert Centerland, 300,000 haloxylon and 20,000 populus euphratica have been planted. Additionally, in order to provide plants with enough water sources, thousands of kilometers of water supply pipelines have been installed on both sides of the road, and solar water supply stations have been constructed here, allowing 86 photovoltaic power stations to pump water to provide plant water sources and also to protect the plants. After 20 years of sand management operations, the Taklamakan Desert is no longer desolate and dreary thanks to the hard work of the city and adjacent communities. A green corridor in the Taklamakan Desert has been achieved. Large-scale oil exploration and development has awoken this fascinating location after the completion of the greening work of 1000 Mu. The Taklamakan Desert, which no one ever visited, has now become a tourist destination that not only drives local economic development, but also improves the surrounding living environment. It is beautiful in the past, when there were no animals here now, but oil workers not only exploited oil in this vast desert, but also participated in the construction of roads and sand control, creating an amazing green miracle. Future tourists will flock to this location because of how active the scenic areas are becoming. The lives of the oil workers are no longer monotonous because more and more individuals are getting involved in sand control and wanting to give selflessly to the desert's reforestation. In 2022, I predict that more people will move here and that this desert will be a good area for everyone to live. According to specialists' exploration, China will also find a valuable resource in the Tacoma Khan Desert, which is water resources, which will amount to approximately 7 billion cubic meters. 
However, with existing technology, mining for water sources in the desert is practically impossible. What do you think about the theory that the city will grow even more in the future if the issue with the desert water source can be resolved? If you enjoyed my video, please leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe.